Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to get strong and fast with a technique that not a lot of people are using called speed strength training. We're first gonna talk about the science with the force velocity curve and how it works, and then we'll actually talk about the application of how you actually do it, with what exercises, with what load, and when you should be doing it. So if you're looking to maximize both strength and speed, you're in the right place, let's go ahead and dive into it. So to lay the groundwork here, we have to talk about the force velocity curve. And the force velocity curve is essentially just a relationship between how forceful an exercise is and how fast an exercise is. Meaning that on one side of the curve, all the way up towards max strength, we have things like a one rep max lift. When we're doing a one rep max lift, it's very forceful, but it's also very slow. If we're loading really heavy, for example, at 90% one rep max plus, we're gonna end up with a slower bar speed here naturally. That makes this very forceful on the force velocity curve, but very low in terms of velocity. And then on the other side of the force velocity curve, we have something that's very fast, but very low load. For example, doing assisted sprinting or sprinting or band assisted jumps are all very, very fast movements, but they don't require a lot of force. So that type of training is on the speed side of the curve. Now there's obviously a lot that's in between, so let's fill in the force velocity curve with all the different training types that you can do. So this may look overwhelming, but really coaching is about deciding how much of each of these you need for your athletes and at the right time. Meaning for some athletes, you may need to prioritize improving their one rep max. That can really help them lay the foundation for all the other power and speed movements that they'll get into maybe later in their training. Other athletes are already really strong, they have a really good one rep max, but they're not that fast. So they need to shift their priority towards more power and speed work on the force velocity curve. So let's go through each of these points on the curve and briefly talk about the pros and cons. Max strength, we're typically using greater than 90% one rep max. This is really great for developing force and again, lays that foundation. But if we wanna get faster, we don't wanna exclusively train in that max force zone. Training like a power lifter and then expecting to get fast is actually a really big training mistake. The only thing I could think of that could sabotage an athletic career more is dating a Kardashian. And that leads us into speed strength. So speed strength is the zone where we're not quite working max strength, but we're loading a little bit less and then we're prioritizing a little bit more of bar speed. For example, we may load at 70 to 90% one rep max and move the bar a little bit quicker than we could if we were getting really close to 100% one rep max. This is where a lot of our training is gonna be for athletes and it may be something like a three, zero, one tempo squat when we're controlling the eccentric lowering portion of a rep but then exploding through the concentric portion of the rep and keeping that fast, that's going to prioritize strength speed. Importantly though, this is still fairly heavy loaded movements. So these aren't things like jumps or throws, we'll get into that a little bit later down the curve. These are still primarily barbell lifts. All right, getting into the power zone, and this is right in the middle of the force velocity curve. This is training that involves a more moderate load, but faster speeds. This could also be more explosive movements like an Olympic lift. The load to achieve peak power is different for each exercise, and this is really important for coaches to understand. If we wanna load a barbell squat and maximize power output, we may try to target around 60, 65% for the barbell back squat. Some athletes it may be more, some athletes it may be a little bit less, but that tends to be around a load that's effective for power for the barbell back squat exercise. Something like a bench press is probably pretty similar. But Olympic lifts, because they're a little bit more dynamic, it's a different movement, we actually have to load them a little bit heavier to see peak power output. So for those Olympic lifts, we tend to see peak power output around 75 to 85% of one rep max. Some more ballistic movements where we start to jump may actually be effectively loaded for power around down to 40% of one rep max. And that's where we start to transition into the main point of this video, which is the speed strength zone. This is an interesting zone where not a lot of people know about how to actually train here and develop good adaptations for both speed and strength. Effective training in this zone typically involves ballistic movements like throws and jumps. For example, dumbbell loaded jumps. We're typically loading this at around 30 to 40% of one rep max for that movement pattern, although that can be hard to figure out because it's something like a jump, so you don't really have a one rep max for it. There are a ton of different protocols that have been researched for this. You could use something like 30% of the athlete's squat max and then do these movements, or what I see as more common is using a percentage of body weight. 
Now to really specifically train vertical jump, we probably only want to go to about 10% of the athlete's body weight and do vertical jump exercises. A lot of coaches who are training their athletes in this zone and are trying to choose how much load they should use will choose based on their periodization model or their overall training structure. For example, if they've had their athletes doing max strength off season and they built a good foundation of strength and then they moved into prioritizing speed strength training more, they may just gradually reduce the load week to week. Meaning for example, they may start the athlete week one around 30% body weight and drop that down to around 25% body weight, 20% body weight, and just work on their squat jumps getting more explosive and higher week to week. There are a lot of different techniques on how you should progress from week to week and how to get the most out of this training zone. But I would encourage you guys to keep it simple and just look for one way to progress it, whether you're dropping the weight and increasing the explosiveness week to week, or whether you're keeping the load the same at say 20% body weight for squat jumps for a few weeks, and maybe you're just adding a little bit of volume each week, for example. This really comes down to the art of coaching in terms of how you're gonna do this. And then lastly, at the very bottom of the force velocity curve, we have speed work. And this is when we're actually working really close to maximal speed or even doing over speed training. This isn't gonna drive a lot of strength adaptations. This is more specific to speed. Working in this speed zone of the force velocity curve, you may see something like the bracketing technique where you're doing 10% underloaded, 10% overloaded of something like a squat jump. Now this is a really good technique to use for specifically improving your vertical jump or specifically improving your max speed, but you're not getting a lot of strength out of it. So you may not see quite as much of the long-term benefit as you would from prioritizing some amount of speed strength training. Okay, so knowing all of this, how do you know how much of each type of training you should be doing? For example, how much of your time should you be prioritizing maximal strength work versus speed strength work? And this will be different for each athlete, but let me give you one example. In the off season, for example, you may be going through a basic strength phase of training where you're really prioritizing an athlete building max strength and building that foundation. They may do half of their training that's really focused on getting close to one rep max and building up their max strength. They may still include some amount of power training, some amount of speed strength training in this as well, but the priority of the off season for some athletes may be max strength. This is a pretty common goal in a college athlete, for example, who needs to prioritize building strength. That same college athlete though, as they approach the season, may shift their priority towards using more speed strength. So for example, a lot of the heavy loads that they were using, they may shift that towards using more exercises that are throws and jumps and more dynamic movements as they approach the season. Of course, we still want some strength and some power stimulus to maintain those adaptations, but they're going to be shifting towards being able to use their strength and being able to apply it faster as they get closer to the season. If possible, you also want to individualize to the athlete's needs. Some athletes are actually pretty close to the point where they're strong enough, but they're not very fast. For example, if they have a powerlifting background or something like that, and they're really strong in their lifts, but they're not that fast, and that's their priority for their sport, you may shift towards prioritizing that in their training. The concept of being strong enough or big enough for your sport may seem absurd because why not just go more and more? And that may be the goal for some people who just wanna maximize size or strength for a four second cameo on the Petco Park Flex Cam. But if your goal is athletics and developing speed, there is diminishing returns to doing more strength and hypertrophy work when you could be prioritizing more speed training in your training program. So if you want to incorporate more speed strength training into your training regimen, consider adding exercises like medicine ball throws, dumbbell loaded jumps, and even things like loaded plyometrics and resisted sprints. When we're loading, we want to target around less than 40% one rep max or around 20-30% body weight depending on the exercise. And we generally want to program these for relatively low reps, for example sets of 4, 5, or 6 with plenty of rest between sets. These will not be effective if you're just crushing athletes with circuits full of dumbbell loaded jumps and throws and plyometrics with no rest in between. Those athletes the next day will just feel like they don't have their legs underneath them, they can't jump effectively, and they probably won't see a lot of adaptations to benefiting speed. In fact, they may just feel like they rode a bike for three days to try to win a Mr. Beast challenge. Overall, if you want to prioritize building strength and speed, consider incorporating a percentage of your training that is focused on the speed strength zone, loading low enough that it's effective for building speed strength specific adaptations. Give it a try and I hope it's really effective for helping you improve your speed and your vertical jump and your strength. If you do have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future videos and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.